much for joining me today on my youtube channel i'm your girl robin nicole the inspiration specialist and i'm wired to inspire you to live your authentic purpose so y'all let me tell y'all about the opposition i've been facing trying to get these videos out when i tell y'all i have been having technical difficulties that i've never had before i my stuff is not recording i literally recorded the first message the other day it was 20 minutes y'all why it saved this 20 minutes. I went to upload it. It only took a minute and 20 seconds. I tried everything to retrieve the, to retrieve the message. Couldn't retrieve it. <clears throat> tried again. Okay. Tried again. Went to record the message. Something told me about five minutes. And go back and see if you can play this back. Would not let me play it back. Now, mind you, I've recorded other things since. No problem, but these a whole problem. So I'm telling you right now, just because I know my personal track record with these things, this definitely is something where I can really see that is gonna is gonna be beneficial for at least one person. The type of opposition I'm I'm getting from this and just the 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 red, you know, the 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 red lights that tell me to stop is like it's almost like the enemy don't want me to get you out of that hook of unforgiveness. It's like the enemy wants you to stay stuck being unforgiving. The enemy wants you to lack some of the things that you need in order to be in a space of freedom and liberation and not letting this person pull and control you because you keep moving in an unforgiveness. So let's run it, y'all. So basically, if you download the ebook, please do. It's right below the description. I think you should if you're going to follow along with me. Um, the book is broken down. It's 30 pages, I think, or maybe like 20, no, it's 26 pages. And this was twice as long as my last book. And I think they're just going to get longer and longer. And again, what I'm trying to do is give you guys a digital product every month. I want to do a digital, um, ebook on, uh, next month as well in March and starting in April, I'll be starting my, uh, my Patreon again. I started it last year and I didn't really talk a whole lot about it. But there's way more digital products and information and just more in-depth stuff in that space. And don't forget, I also have a podcast. So before I get started, remember to like, share, subscribe, turn on the notifications. Because like I said, on this end, stuff has been crazy with the downloads and uploads. So just so you're on point and you don't miss nothing, you can see when everything drops. You can get your ebooks. You can get all the other things that's popping up through this channel. And you won't be missing out. Now let's get into it. So the book is in four parts. I talk about abuse, ego, miscommunication, and control. These are the four areas the Holy Spirit led me to talk about in terms of unforgiveness. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. Abuse, unforgiveness because you were abused in some way. You know, physical, mental, sexual, emotional, uh, mental, but you have suffered from abuse and you are caught in the trap of unforgiveness because of what this has done and how it's negatively affected you, right? There's that. Then there is unforgiveness because of ego. Most times, this is the part that people don't really talk about, but this is the thing where God wants us to realize the role we play when we get into ego-driven matches with people and situations that cause us to have unforgiveness. And this Book is a space where we're going to break down through prayer and through just quick little points of what can happen when you do not adjust how you are thinking when it comes to why you're still in a space of unforgiveness, right? The next one is miscommunication. This one is about uh, you could be in a situation with somebody because this could be this is this does not have to necessarily be about friendships or relationships or partnerships or human being relationships you can also be mis communicating in a space of a job or a space of an opportunity and if that bag gets fumbled then there can be some unforgiveness there because the miscommunication was off right the last area i talk about is control 
And there's some of you who are stuck on, you know, being unforgiving towards somebody because you don't have control. And God got to bust that up out. I'm telling you, a lot of people are not going to like it. But I see why there was so much opposition because I told you I'm here to serve y'all. I'm here to serve y'all. We're here to operate in excellence and roll with it. You know, the same things we've been, we've been doing on the podcast. We're doing them over here on YouTube, y'all. And in these YouTube streets, we're going to get this help. We're going to get this healing because it's only up from here. There's no reason why we shouldn't be handling our business and doing the things we know God has called us to do. And the cool thing is, y'all, like, God has just shown me these things about how you can be affected and what kind of sins you can be operating in, in the space of this unforgiveness. You know, like, what, what, and I'm going to get into this because I wanted to let y'all know if I didn't already. Each day, we're going to do the topic. So today is the first day. And as you can see by the um, the picture, it is how do I forgive myself? But I'm just giving you a little a little uh, prequel to what's going on you know, in, for this week for the entire series. Now, I do want to say this too. The first video was supposed to be up yesterday. And of course, we had the opposition. Today, I was going to drop Forgive Yourself in the Abuse video. But I'm actually just going to do this one today because I think I might. I'm kind of on the fence. I got to just really be quiet about it. But I think God wants me to drop a palindrome 22222 video today. But it'll be really quick. And it's probably not about a lot of the things that we've been hearing about. But I'm just going to pray about it. And if that's the case, I'm just going to push out those two videos today. And then I'll continue tomorrow with abuse and ego. And then on Thursday, I will go ahead and do uh, control. And on Friday, we'll close out with miscommunication. Y'all know how I do. I like to give you a book and I like to give you a series to go with it so we can really get the healing done. I don't want to just inspire y'all. And then you still like, oh, Lord, okay, that's it. No, I want you to put the tools in place. I want you to get your mind right. I want you to really, really get into a space where you can affect change because I think that's really, really important, okay? Now, with that being said, okay, with that being said, today we are talking about forgiving yourself. So let's talk about that for a minute. I'm going to I'm going to give you something personal. I want to tell you guys about something personal that I, I experienced and I hope that just a little bit of this might be able to help somebody as you try to navigate your feelings right now and how you are viewing yourself and if you're struggling with not forgiving yourself, right? So, I was thinking about a situation actually when I was finishing up the book and you know, I'm wrapping up on the forgiveness aspects of things and there's two things that I did not add in the book. And those are the two things that I'm talking about today on the video. And I did that on purpose. That was by design. I did not put the paramount scripture that I will usually stand on when we're talking about forgiveness. But I'm going to talk about it today because the book has, I think, 30, um, no, 20 scriptures in it, I think. So there's plenty of word in there and plenty of things to stand on, quotes and all of that good stuff. But this in particular, God said, no, 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 save this for the video. And then, you know, they'll get the other stuff in the ebook, right? So I don't know. I just, I was trying to finish the book, y'all. And when I got to a particular point where I was trying to make the decision of if I should put this particular scripture in there and if I should, um, you know, talk more about the forgiveness of self in the actual ebook, you know, I was like, man, I started kind of getting emotional because I started thinking about a situation that I was in at one point and y'all, I got so mad at myself. It was crazy. I got so mad at myself. I was like, why did you do that? You know? And I just felt myself just getting annoyed. You know, I'm like, why did you let them handle you like that? Like, you know better. And I just started to go down a list of all of the things that ticked me off so bad. Y'all, I was so mad at myself. I mean, it was like a rage came up. And it was all against myself. I wasn't, y'all, I wasn't even mad at the person who did the stuff. I wasn't even, I've been over that. But I never really sat with how angry I was with myself and how much I just felt like, this is unforgivable, right? I've been like, why did you do this? Why? None of this should have went like this. Like, why? And then, let me tell you what the enemy does. What the enemy will do, the enemy has points of entry, is what I like to call it. 
And in each one of those layers of forgiveness that I mentioned, okay, there is a layer that is designed to pull in all of the evil and all of his seven first cousins, second cousin, third cousins. So I'll give you an example. If one of the things that, that the enemy knows, like, well, if I, if I make her stay mad at, at him, if I make her stay mad at her, then this is what's going to happen. I know that she going to get so mad and she going to start feeling so bad. She going to start having low self-esteem and he going to get so mad. He going to start having anger issues. And then, you know, then they're not going to be getting along with each other. And then, you know, they're not best friends no more. This hun is her, her best friend since she was school. Her and this girl used to do everything together. So now they're going to be mad at each other. And then you got this. And then you got that. And like, oh, well, I'm going to quit my job because I don't like them people that it was mean to me. And I don't want to be there anymore. And then y'all see what I'm saying? It just turns into a domino effect of stuff because the enemy needs a point of entry. So his thing is, he's like, yeah, well, I know that. I can't get her like this because she's on top of it. She is handling her business. She's doing what she has to do. She's in her word. He's taking care of his business. He's taking care of his family. He's, he's focused on the Lord. I got to find another way to get them. Because they're not going to get it the old way. They're going to straighten up. They're flying right. They're not going to get it. They're not going to get it the old-fashioned way. Where I could just dangle this thing in front of them. I could just dangle something to make them be promiscuous. So I could just dangle something that'll make them say, Ooh, well, Lord, I'm gonna put you to the side. Well, look, they didn't got too strong in God for that. So I'm, I can't even use my old tricks, these old tricks too, but I'm gonna have to go to this trick bag to go and get them because they, they too smart for this trick. I used to get them when they were in college and when they was out here doing whatever, Oh, I could get them with these. I can't get them with that. So now I got to be a little more creative in how I get them in my trick bag. I got to, I got to catch them at a different point of entry. So you know what they do? They make you get into it with somebody. They make them cause an offense. Uh oh, oh, excuse me. I got chills. Not offense. I'm sorry. Offense. They make you cause an offense or them cause you an offense. And guess what happened right there in that space? That's the point of entry. Cause you get so mad. Because they have the audacity to do that to you. And you are so undone. You cannot believe it. You're speechless. You don't know what to do with yourself. And then you find out. You wake up one day. Now your self-esteem low. Now your money funny. You're mad at everybody. All of these things that you were working so hard not to participate in anymore. You wake up one day and you find yourself in that place. And you want to know why? Because the enemy had to find a point of entry in unforgiveness. And you want to know what he does right up in here? He says, oh, you know what? Bet. She's mad. He's mad. The boss is mad. The people up the street mad. Everybody mad now. Right? Everybody is just, oh my God. Like, we can't believe this is happening. And what about those of you who are in something similar where you're in a space of, you know what? I cannot believe that I thought that this was going to be the project that I was working on. You know, I've been working for this company for 10 years and now this thing came up and now I can't do it. You know, like I, I just can't believe this. I cannot believe God is allowing these things to happen. Right. So with that being said, this is where the enemy begins to have a field day. His number one tactic is, is this. It's Okay. I am going to let them get so angry that they're going to create a defense and say that this is why this is unforgivable. So that's where he has a, the fun at. Because what happens is that person that's offended, they start calling and contacting people or they start engaging people and talking to others. And then they try to find people they could say how that other person did them wrong. And you get them to pile up with you and say, and they villainize you. Don't forget when people start messing around with unforgiveness, you start villainizing people. Again, it's the type of stuff people don't like to talk about, but it's the truth. People don't want to be honest about that because I've done it. More than likely, you might have done it a time or two. I know I have, but it's not until you mature and grow up and realize, you know what? You got to find a way to not keep getting caught up in these snares. I am not even saying me doing this means that I won't ever do that again, but I have way more wisdom and authority than I did before. And every time you grow, you go into a higher direction. So that's what the point of this is. Now, we got a framework and now we basically see how the enemy tries to get us, right? Check this out. You are facing a situation 
And now when you look up at yourself, you see what happened to you. You see the role you played in it. You see that you have put yourself in a position where now you're angry at yourself. You're mad at yourself. You don't want this to be the case. But like I said, I'm literally reading and writing out this book, y'all. And I just get hysterical because I'm like, oh my God, like I'm so mad at myself. So it's one thing to place the blame on other people, right? It's one thing to place the blame on other people, but it's a whole different ball game when you start placing the blame on yourself. That hit different. That's not the same thing. And what I want you to really think about right up in this space is this. When it comes down to why you're mad and why you are not forgiving yourself for past mistakes, what is the root of that? Who told you that you had to hold yourself to such a standard and because you fell short, because you are a human being, you are not God, you will err and make mistakes. Who told you? Is this a self-imposed standard that you put on yourself? Is someone else dangling purse strings? Is somebody else controlling your money? Is somebody else controlling your life? Is somebody else controlling the things that you get? You got to go back and see. Because what you're going to realize is sometimes you don't even pay attention to those things going on. You're not even catching it. Because the way you're viewing it is simply this. You say, you know what? I'm just mad at them. I'm not mad at them no more and I'm good. And then you, like I said, you wake up one day and be like, oh, wait, I might not be mad at them, but I am furious with myself. I can't believe I let this person do this to me. I can't believe I let this job slip through my hands. I can't believe I lost my car. I can't believe I lost my house. I can't believe I lost my money. I can't believe I wasted this time. I can't believe I ruined my business. I can't believe I ruined my marriage. I can't believe I ruined my life. You start saying all of these crazy things to yourself and you are not even paying attention to the tactics being used against you. Because essentially, it's very simple. The enemy knows if you can make yourself your own worst enemy, that makes his job that much easier because he really don't have to do nothing. If you're going to tell your tear yourself up, it's no need for him to join in because you're like, oh, no, I got this, dog. I'm going I'm, I'm to knock myself down right quick. No, you got to wake up from that. The biggest reason why we don't forgive ourselves is because something in us feels like we have to continuously be tortured for mistakes we make. Okay, we have to continually be tortured for things that we've done and we have to quote unquote pay this price. I am not telling you that if you did something wrong, you cannot pay. You're not supposed to repent or go through whatever process you have to go through to maybe fix or clean up what you have done. But you are not supposed to be burned at the stake. That's a lie. That's not how that works. Especially when it comes to these things, when you're dealing with other people, let me tell you, some of you right now who are dealing with unforgiveness because you fell out with somebody or it was a mis misunderstanding, miscommunication. Again, you know, I'm gonna get real deep on that on Friday, but if you are a person who fits in one of those spaces, this is what I need you to understand moving forward, right? This is what I really need you to understand. You have got to know by all accounts. Everything that has happened to you, whether you made it happen, wanted it to happen or not, it happens for a reason. It happens for a reason. All, all of us have different reasons, a hey, different strokes, different folks. We know that. But where is the part where you say, okay, I don't like that I did this. I don't like that I allowed them to do me that, or I don't like that I did whatever. What? needs to happen so that you can understand that forgiveness is given freely. What needs to happen for you to understand when you do not forgive yourself or forgive is fact. The Bible says when you do not forgive others, God cannot forgive you. You want to know why that's a deep, deep, deep scripture It's the deepest of the deep, because guess what? What if the person that you're not forgiving is you? Are you kidding me? If you are not forgiving yourself for your mistakes and our God, our father is forgiving you. Why are you doing that? I really hope this is breaking off of somebody. You got to look at this thing logically. Now you've been too emotional. You've been too deep in your feelings. And that's how I had to snap out of it. I was like, wait a minute, hold up. Cause what, what some people deal with, everybody has a different way that they get around and how they move through things. Right? And for me, I was understanding the emotional aspects of things. 
Let me, I just feel like I need to say this. This is just a Holy Spirit interruption. Don't let people beat you up because they say you're too emotional. Let me tell you something I'm learning about human beings in a human condition. Nobody can be on all the time. And a lot of times people get caught up in not forgiving themselves because people have villainized a personality trait. How you going to villainize somebody for something that they was born doing? How you going to, how you going to make a person feel bad? And now they don't want to forgive themselves because you just beat the hell out of them and just, you so this, you so that. What is, what is that? I think about the times when I was younger and I did that to people. When I tell y'all I was repenting, I was like, God, forgive me. I was just so foolish. I was just being a foolish woman, a foolish girl back then, honestly, because I didn't even realize that's what I was doing. It's like the nerve because a person is not doing what you want them to do. And what y'all don't realize is the enemy loves that mess. Because when you do wake up and realize what it is, you could have a whole big issue with not forgiving yourself. Because when you look at your posture, when you look at the offenses caused to you, when you look at how they played you, when you look at how you played yourself, when you look at how you played them, it can cause you to feel awful. It can cause you to feel inadequate and terrible and unworthy. And that is a lie from the pit, the deepest pit of hell. Okay. That is what the enemy wants to do. He's not trying to, he, unforgiveness is like the perfect, it's just the perfect cocktail of, for him, sugar, sweet, the right amount of this, the right amount of that is perfect for the enemy. Because he says, oh, if I, if I do a little bit of this, I'm going to let them say this. I'm going to let her do that. I'm going to let him do this. I'm going to let that group over there say that. I'm going to do, he, he just put it all together. And he just tried to see who's going to have enough wisdom to know, hey, you know what? I want to be really mad at this person, but I'm going to forgive them and I'm going to move on. I'm going to just let this go. But then what happens is with that, he likes people who are presumptuous and overzealous too. Because he loves people that says that type of thing and they quote unquote move on. But then weeks later, they're constantly thinking about it. And then they wake up one day and they start feeling bad about themselves and what they did. And boom, guess who's there? Unforgiveness of self. You see how that little trick works? But that's not something we sit and talk about. Y'all, that's why the enemy does not want me to get these videos out. Because it's simple, tiny changes. And it's literally, it ends up being something that is just not a hard reach to grasp. It's just not something that's at the forefront, though, because it's not something that we think about all the time. We sit there and say, oh, this happened, that happened. Oh, my goodness. And we focus on that. But we're, but we're really not realizing that. At its core, the entire thing goes back to what the word of God says the mission of the enemy does. He has a couple of missions. Let's talk about the first three, to kill, to steal, and destroy. And another one that uh, you know he keeps in his back pocket. He liked to come like a thief in the night. So he got all these little weird things that he tries to do to get us and tries to throw us off. And then when we get out of character, it causes us not to, um, it causes us not to understand God and the fullness of what he's trying to do for us. I'll tell you something else when you don't forgive yourself, when you don't forgive yourself about certain things and when you don't forgive others about certain things, you will begin to block opportunities in your life. Let me let me give you an example of forgiveness when you don't forgive yourself. Let's say you are so upset because you were in a situation where, you know, you maybe you did something wrong, whether you tried to or not. And then these new opportunities come. Do you realize when you are stuck not forgiving yourself? I'm not saying don't take responsibility. I'm not saying throw the blame somewhere else. No, go through the process of actual healthy healing emotion and taking good honest, pure responsibility. Do not throw taking responsibility out, uh, for your actions out of the door. It is necessary and it is paramount. You still have to do that, okay? We're not excluding or excusing any of that. But I'm talking about when you come to the place in this situation, whatever it may be, when you come to the place where you get to, to, you get, to get, um, get down to the details and you're saying, okay, you know what? I can't seem to access this opportunity now. Well, it could be because you are still harboring unforgiveness toward yourself. 
Some of those situations might repel you now. Maybe what came to you before might not even come to you now. Because before, when you were getting all the big ticket items and all the big ticket opportunities and all of the things were flowing and everything was going great, things might not be flowing now since that happened. Because guess what? You don't realize, even though it's not something you think about every day, it might be in the back of your mind or you quote unquote think you're over it. The Lord knows, your spirit knows if, you, if you're still not forgiving yourself. And then what ends up happening is, y'all, you end up getting to a crossroads and you get to a place and you say, oh my God, such and such is happening now. That wasn't like that before. But you want to know why? Because now you have repositioned yourself in an, in an inadequate space. Now you have positioned yourself in a place of unworthiness. Now you have positioned yourself, again, not even realizing it. It's not even obvious. It's not even something that's in everybody's face. It wasn't even in your face, but you are now giving off. You are now giving off a posture of what well, they told me I was bad at this and they didn't like how I did that. So maybe, you know, I, sh I'm, I don't want, I don't really want to take no more opportunities because I'm scared I'm going to do that again. Hint, that is a form of unforgiving yourself. I mean, excuse me, not forgiving yourself. I just need y'all to see how dirty that joker is i just need you to see how that fool just oh it uh, it just tries to come in in all these little ways and you don't even realize you playing yourself you don't even realize that you have set yourself up for the okie doke and the whole time you thinking you living right you got it going on you handling your business you're doing this you're doing that but you the big elephant in the room is that you do not forgive yourself because you keep playing over and over and over in your head what you did wrong and it might not have been the thing you thought about the day it happened but baby you'll wake up two three months two years years later and be like oh my god what have i done that's why when these things happen y'all you got to start getting to the bottom of it some of y'all been holding on to unforgiveness of self since you were little children some of y'all mad that y'all became friends with the little girl and y'all ain't friends no more some of y'all mad that you should have went to school for this when you went to college and you didn't so now you're beating yourself up because you hate your job some of y'all mad because you got into it with somebody and then they might have left your life or passed away you didn't get a chance to rectify Baby, the devil is a liar. You got to let that go. Like I said, I'm not telling you not to be uncaring. I'm not telling you not to address and acknowledge what you may have done or didn't do. But this is the time for you to release that. If you keep holding on to unforgiveness of self and not allowing yourself to let God use you fully healed and forgiven, then you are literally saying, God, I don't need you. You're literally exalting yourself above God. Nobody would even think of that. You're like, well, Robin, how me not forgiving myself, exalt, exalt myself above God? It's because God is keep trying to get... He He's keep trying to get you to forgive yourself and handle yourself better. And you're like, no, I got it. I'm just going to be over here in my little corner, unforgiving myself. I don't really need your help because I got this. Well, anytime you tell God you got this and you can, you might as well say, I'm above you now. This is above me. Lord, I don't need your little assistance. Okay. You know, it's, I don't care if you know how many hairs I got on my head and I don't know how many hairs I got on my head. I don't care if you know um, when I'm going to leave this earth. I don't care if you know how many cells in my body. It don't matter that I don't know all of the important information about myself and you know everything about me. Forget that. But I'm just going to be over here in my corner and just be mad because they shouldn't have did me that. I'm going to be mad because not everything happened and now I'm mad at myself because I shouldn't have played myself and I should have went off and I should have did this and did that. Now I'm mad at myself. How silly does that sound? Yo, that's that's basically what we're doing. I probably just said some of y'all probably laughing at me because of the way I'm breaking this down. But I'm just being honest. We're not really looking at it the way that it actually is. It's foolishness. It's complete and utter foolery. And so many of you are trying to figure out how to function and you don't know how, who, who is this for? This is prophetic. Thank you, Lord. Some of y'all right now, like, God, I don't know why this keeps happening. Why do I keep getting tripped up in this space? I'm, I'm, I'm focused. I'm doing everything you're telling me to do. I'm not, you know, I'm not engaging in the wrong company. I'm not doing the wrong things. I'm really, really focused on you right now, but I am struggling. Guess what? When you go back and pray, say, Lord, am I, am I not forgiving myself for something? Is that causing a barrier that I cannot seem to understand or grasp? Is there something there that's causing me not to do the thing that I need to get from this cycle? I'm in a cyclical thing in my life where every time I think it's fine, it's not because I'm really, really suffering and I'm really, really struggling with fully forgiving myself. I don't, 
I don't see myself the same guy because I said that I'm a person like this if X, Y, and Z happened. And when it happened, I didn't take care of myself. I let somebody mishandle me and I didn't treat myself well right there. I'm mad. I can't forgive myself for that. Y'all, forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. Get out of the space of idolatry. Get out of being self-centered and go to God and say, hey, hey, my bad. My bad. I was tripping. You know more about me than I know about myself. In fact, you know everything about me. You know things about me that I don't know about me. So you want to know something? How about I give you that back? My bad. I'm sorry, God. Here you go. Handle your business. How about you reset me so that I can start seeing myself the way you want me to see myself, which is let me see myself the way that you do. Because let me tell y'all something about what unforgiveness does, okay? Everybody loves forgiveness. It sounds great. You got to forgive them. Y'all hear me? Forgive them, forgive them. But everybody loves forgiveness until it's time to forgive. That's the truth. Ain't that the truth? Right? And and and, and there's this wonderful quote that I have in the ebook. It says, forgive others not because they deserve forgiveness, but because you deserve peace. So imagine if you have to forgive others, right? Not because they don't deserve it and you deserve peace. Well, what do you say about forgiving yourself? Let's put yourself up in there. Forgive yourself, not because you don't deserve forgiveness, but because you deserve peace. That hit different when you, when you put your name in it, huh? Huh? Here's another one. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. Put your name in the blank. Bear with yourself and forgive yourself. And if you have a grievance against yourself, forgive yourself as the Lord has forgiven you. Ooh, you see how that just hit different? No, that just hit different. That just hit different. That hit different. Because you don't want to be in a perpetual state of always feeling like you're not getting it right. You're not tired, my friend. You're not tired. You're not. Put it down, baby. Put it down. That old, that old, ain't no mama came out, huh, baby? <laughs> I know y'all be laughing when I talk, when my accent come out. But it's all good. It's who I am. I'm going to be myself. Y'all know what time of day it is over here. So no, like I'm serious, y'all. Like, baby, put it down. Go ahead with all that. You don't have time for that. You hear me? Here's one of my favorite ones. Forgive. Because none of us are perfect. Y'all better know something. I'm going to be running this thing back and looking at my own book in the future. Because I can guarantee you things are going to come up in all of our lives where we're still going to have to deal with forgiveness because it's a constant thing that we do. You got to look at forgiveness like brushing your teeth every day, taking a bath, putting on clothes, doing the basic necessities of life. Like you have to make it a lifestyle for yourself. You hear me? Y'all, when it comes to the enemy, the best revenge is forgiveness. It, 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 it's like kryptonite to Satan. It's kryptonite. The minute he see you beefing with all the people God wants you to be close with, the minute he see you beefing with yourself and not forgiving yourself, he says, perfect. I got him where I want him. But the minute he sees you loving yourself, the minute he sees you saying, well, you know what? Wait a minute. I know that I forgave them and I did not forgive myself. So now I forgave myself. Let me just make sure that do I need to talk to them again? Do I need to give them an apology? Do I need to clean anything else up so that I can walk in this uprightly and I can do this the way God wants me to the honorable way? Okay. And for some of you, it don't matter if you was doing stuff crazy last month and people saying, oh, she like this. Oh, he like that. Well, guess what? You might not be like that today. Stop letting people tell you out the frame because you're not doing what they want you to do. And I can tell you one thing, everybody who cut you up, somebody cutting them up somewhere too. And it might just be them. And I don't mean literally with a blade or a knife, but I just mean tearing them up and breaking them up, you know, tearing them apart. Because that's what people do. Hurt people, hurt people. But guess what else, baby? Healed people, heal people too. So it ain't just no, it ain't just the negative one. We're not doing that over here anymore. We have to look at all sides of the coin. Because at the end of the day, 
God has a beautiful purpose for you. And if you keep operating in a space of feeling inadequate, if you keep operating in a space, come on, hear me out. You keep operating in a space where you just so fit to be tired with yourself that you can't forgive yourself. Then what are you doing? The house and the car and the friends is not, that's not going to help you. Because if you, if you, if you by yourself, you're hurting and you're mad and you don't know what you're doing. This is why y'all hear me out. It should make sense to you now why I'm talking about ego, why I'm talking about miscommunication, why I'm talking about, excuse me, abuse. You know, these, these things are very, very real because different ways unforgiveness can set root and you will have convinced yourself. I have every right to not forgive them. And you don't realize every time you say that and take that stance, you would have shot yourself in the foot. And unfortunately, sadly, even if it's someone that abused you, it's still the same rules that apply. That's the part that sucks. That's the part that I know I can't stand. I'm going to be transparent. I ain't finna stun on no YouTube. I hate that part. Especially when it takes someone's innocence or it does something to violate someone. I cannot stand that, but it is what it is. And there are these things they talk about them called lots, L-O-T. You might hear somebody say, well, that's their lot in life. Everybody has a lot in life. And I'm not talking about the things that happen where people say, you know, this person is successful and they have this much money and they got this going on. They got this and that, blah, 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 right? I'm not talking about that. That's not necessarily a lot in life. That's just something you might be doing to achieve those things. But a lot in life is if you lose a parent, if you lose a sibling, if you if you lose a, a child, you, you lose things and you go through things in life that you have no control over. That's a lot, an, an L-O-T. That is your lot in life because you did not choose for those things to happen. Well, you can choose to study for the test and go to that school. You can choose to go and do that job. You see what I'm saying? That's different. That's not the same as, a, as, as your lot in life. So for some of you, you are not forgiving yourselves for your lot in life. And you have nothing to do with that part. Some of y'all in the trick bag behind something you didn't do to begin with. But for some reason, either someone else has made you think that something is wrong with you or you have allowed yourself to look at other people. Come on, somebody. You are looking around at other people. And when you are looking at those people, you are now beginning to take those things on for yourself and you are causing yourself a grave disservice because it is completely and utterly and absolutely outside of God's perfect will for your life. Because let me guarantee you something. I can put this on everything. God will never tell you that you ain't nothing. God ain't going to never tell you you trash. God is never going to tell you, oh, it's okay that you don't forgive yourself. Just hate yourself. No problem. Never. So anytime you are riddled with unforgiveness, God ain't got no parts. That's on everything. He don't got no parts. And I don't care how much you keep saying, but I keep praying and fasting and Lord. Mm -mm. God ain't going to never tell you that's okay. And that's why you got to get the book. Y'all, this is just the first one. Okay. We're not even talking about all of the other things I'm going to break down. And those videos coming this week. And I'm going to be very specific. The one about abuse is going to be heavy. So I just want to warn you. That's not going to be a super light one. But the enemy has really negatively affected and it's just making me emotional a lot of people who have been abused that you don't even know have been abused in a way where they have been deeply violated it's not a misunderstanding it's not ego it's not control it's not the lighter ones we're going to talk about at the end of the week but this one is heavy and i just feel if you are someone who has had that type of situation and it's not just sexual or physical it's also emotional and mental and spiritual abuse spiritual abuse is a bad one too it's it's, it's terrible so I want you to just consider that. And again, if you have not gotten the ebook, please download it, y'all. I'm I'm, pop, I'm, trap, I'm dropping it in the chat right now. It's pinned on there. Just go right there and download it right quick so you can follow along for the rest of the week. But that is what I wanted to talk to you guys about today. I think you guys, you know, y'all heard me loud and clear, right? You will never know how strong your heart is until you learn to forgive who broke it. And if you are the one that broke your own, own heart, you have to find a way to let it go. Because your strength 
is hidden behind the unforgiveness. Your strength is not in keeping it. I'm Wired to Inspire. I hope you are too.